I'm John Kovach. I've been a newsman, a sports announcer, and a football coach, but the one constant since I was old enough to stand next to a stream with my dad has been fishing. I've waded rapids, stood on slick rocks, hacked through ice, and been tossed about the deck of a boat. And I want you to love fishing as much as I do and join me on this journey. Welcome to Yankee Fisherman, presented by The Dock Shop. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Yankee Fisherman, presented by The Dock Shop, Thursday, January 25th. A lot going on this weekend. You've got the fly fishing show in Edison. I had planned to be there. Uh, circumstances will not allow that, so I will miss that. First off, though, we do have an update on the inland fisheries regulation proposal in Connecticut, and that included the trout stamp, the extension of the Mill River uh, wild trout management area, uh, trophy carp waters, a number of things. The Legislative Regulation Review Committee met January 23rd and they voted to reject without prejudice the package, uh, which according to the DEEP means that they found some issues, substantive, substantive concerns, quote unquote, that they need to address. According to a post from the DEEP, the major one is whether there can be a single stamp for trout and salmon as opposed to two separate stamps, one for trout kokanee and one for Atlantic salmon. If you recall, the proposal was for initially for a trout stamp, a salmon stamp, or a combo stamp. They consolidated that to one stamp. That appears to have raised a red flag with the Legislative Regulation Review Committee. Because it was rejected without prejudice, they can put it back on the agenda. DEEP is working on addressing the committee's concerns, and their hope is to resubmit the package for the February 27th regulation review meeting. Until then, it remains status quo. So if you're in Connecticut, you have your license, you can fish whatever. If the trout stamp is approved, then things would change. But right now, that has not been approved. That remains on hold. We are also continuing to follow yet another spill, the third of the winter, in the Naugatuck. Again, in Waterbury, this one started. Uh, flowed down the Naugatuck. It's flowed now into the Housatonic. Uh, Leon Sylvester's captured some video and photos of oil fouling the Housatonic, the shores. We're waiting to see just what the impact is on both the Naugatuck and the Housatonic rivers, as well as potentially the Long Island Sound. Uh, something's got to be done to stop this because we've now had three spills in a very short period of time in a river that a lot of people worked very hard to fix years, if not decades, of mistreatment, and now we're back to dumping in it seemingly on a regular basis. This has to stop, and we'll be following up more on this on upcoming shows. As we said, the Edison Fly Fishing Show is coming up this weekend in New Jersey. One of the key people there will be Jen Ripple. Jen is uh, the publisher and editor-in-chief of Dunn Magazine. She's leading the Women's Showcase. Uh, she's also got another appearance coming up in Connecticut. We talked to Jen the other day by phone. Here's that interview. Welcome back to Yankee Fisherman, presented by The Dock Shop. We are privileged to be joined right now with Jen Ripple. She is editor-in-chief and publisher of Dunn Magazine. Uh, Jen is going to be overseeing the Women's Showcase at the Edison Stop on the Fly Fishing Show. That is this weekend. She will also be the keynote speaker when the Connecticut Fly Fishermen's Association holds its banquet. That is on February 3rd. Jen, thanks for taking some time to join us. Thank you for having me. Now, women in fly fishing getting quite a bit of attention. You were recently on an ESPN podcast. There was a big story in the New York Times. Is it continuing to be a growing segment of fly fishing? Yeah, absolutely. Women are the biggest growing segment in fly fishing and have been now for the last couple of years. Why is that? Uh, I just think that as the uh, women see more women on the water, it becomes something that they think is feasible and not like it. You know, it used to be that fly fishing was seen as this old 
you know, rich white man sport where it was really expensive and it was really hard to do. And I think that we've been breaking down those stereotypes. And so the more that we make it accessible and we show that the everyday woman is out there enjoying this sport, more women are attracted to it. I really hope that this effort to break that down is successful because I really think that to survive angling, fly fishing in particular, and some organizations in it really need to eliminate that stereotype that it's a rich, elitist, old white men's sport. And I applaud what you've been doing with it. Um, Thank you. How did you get started fly fishing? Uh, I actually was working at the University of Michigan, and it was a really cold winter, and there was nothing to do. And so I looked online and saw a fly tying class, and I really didn't know that even such a thing like that existed. And so I went to the local fly shop there and took a class, and from the moment I walked in, it was just like I was home. I was obsessed. I mean, I, I know no other fly angler out there knows about the obsession that comes with it. But, you know, I mean, it's one of those obsessive sports, and from that moment, it was all I could think about. So, so then when the, when the ice was off the river, the Huron River then, in the spring, I just spent all of my time after work in that river uh, fishing. So you started tying before fishing. Yeah, I did. That, that, that's interesting. I, I don't know that you see that a lot, but I think it's something that truly is an avenue we need to pursue more. Because as you said, you get a cold winter, there's nothing to do. You find a uh -huh. fly tying class, and then you want to go out and actually fish what you've made. What are your favorite species to target? Yeah, exactly. So when I started, the Huron River is a smallmouth fishery, and so I started fishing for smallmouth. And uh, honestly, it was about two years before I realized that as a fly angler, I was supposed to fish for trout, right? So I've always been more of the big game. Uh, anglers, so I love saltwater fishing, and I love to fish for bass and pike and muskie and uh, anything that's going to really fight back. Now, tell us about Dunn Magazine. How did you end up there? So when I moved back from Ann Arbor, Michigan to Chicago, there was a fly tying group in my little area, and so I started going there. And the guy who was teaching the class had just started a Midwest fly fishing magazine called A Tight Loop. And at the time, I was writing a blog that was completely separate from fly fishing. And he had seen the blog and said, hey, would you like to write a woman's column for our magazine? So I did. But that was, you know, I did that for a couple of years, but it was a very, like, um, a double entendre kind of column. They wanted something that was, like, you know, um, the the typical women's column of back in those days. So it was I'd write articles like the sex hatch or eight inches, all these ridiculous things. Oh. And but I really wanted to write like a, a real article for a women's magazine. So I started looking around for a women's magazine to write for and there wasn't one. And that was in June of two thousand and thirteen and by September I had started and had my first magazine. I figured if I was missing it there were others that were as well. I think you're absolutely right, and that's impressive to go to launch that quickly. Uh, Done available online at dunnmagazine.com. It also available in print. What can an angler look forward to when they get an edition of Done? Oh, so, um, well, apart from the four issues that you got in 2018 of this, what everybody calls the Coffee Table Magazine, you're going to see articles you know we, we try to be very empowering so our tagline is empowering women not ignoring men because we didn't want to be like this male bashing uh magazine because that's not what it's about we you know as as an angler i love men nine out of ten women get involved in fly fishing because of some type of male figure in their life right be it a grandfather a father a son an uncle you know whatever um and so we believe that to empower the female angler and anglers in general, you know, half of our readership is male as well because we're predominantly a fly fishing magazine. Um, but, you know, we believe to do that, we tell the everyday woman's story. So the everyday angler, because, you know, I mean, I could have the professional women in our field write for our magazine, and some of them do on occasion, you know, like there'll be a couple of articles in the magazine about that, but I don't think that's as empowering. You know, if I. If I see, you know, Claire Carter catch a, a GT in Oman, I think, wow, that's a beautiful, amazing story. But that's not going 
empower a woman who's out there on the fringes who's thinking about getting into fly fishing or new to fly fishing to think that they can do that. Whereas a story about a woman who found her father's fly fishing gear after he died and picked it up and worked through the stages of grief with a fly rod, that can that relates to every single person. So those are the stories we try to tell. We try to tell the everyday story that's going to grip you and is going to teach you and is going to empower you to pick up a fly rod. Um, and then they can also see destination places. Like I, I talked about Oman. Our first edition on print had a story on Oman. And, uh, you know, we, we do... We, do, we talk about, you know, places in New Zealand. And so we'll cover the whole, you know, the whole world of fly fishing, but we'll tell it from mostly the everyday woman's story. And which I think is so important, and I, and I love that uh, looking for the, the story that really anyone, a male or female, could relate to finding their late grandfather's fly fishing gear or just wanting to try something because they've heard about it. And the destination so re- are going to attract everybody. So really, this is a magazine for all anglers with a women's tilt to it. Yeah, so, and that's what everybody has been saying. I love the emails that we get on a weekly basis from, from the guys out there that say, you know, I bought this magazine for my wife, but I love it as well. You know, this is not a woman's magazine. This is a fly fishing magazine. And it just so happens to be a fly fishing magazine where the vast majority of our authors are female. That's the only difference. How will you come out quarterly? Yep, quarterly. It's 144 pages. It is oversized. It's all 100% eco-friendly paper, vegetable ink, the whole thing. It's really, I mean, I think it's visually very beautiful. What I've seen of it looks that way as well. I I really, really enjoy looking at it. Um, Thank you. Now, you're going to be in Edison this weekend for the uh, fly fishing show. Tell us about the Women's Showcase. Yeah, so um, I have the privilege for the last two years of putting on the Women's Showcase at the Fly Fishing Shows. And it's been just this fabulous, um, it's turned into this re- deep place to be. And it's interesting, you know, this morning I was reading through uh, the Fly Fishing Shows Facebook page, and uh, a man and a woman had commented on there about how we're so, you know, archaic. There's only one woman speaker on the list, and they're not going to attend until we actually have, you know, are more inclusive. And they totally missed the fact that there's a whole woman showcase that has nothing but women speakers, like Heidi Newt, the Tarpon World Record holder, is going to speak on catching big tarpon. I mean, we have we have people coming in from all over to speak that are women in in the industry who are going to teach nothing but you know uh, a great things in fly fishing. And so we have a whole showcase that's dedicated just to women-owned or women-centric products. And we've created that like a safe zone kind of thing where women come and stay. And in Denver, it's really interesting. We always set up a campfire, like circle around this like fake campfire in the middle of all of the booths. And I have a picture, which is just so hilarious. It's all the men sitting around the campfire in the women's showcase while their wives are trying on gear and shopping. And I thought, that looks just like Nordstrom's at Christmas time. <laughs> yes, it does. I'm having, I'm having flashbacks to that. No, but that yeah, yeah, exactly. Great. Yeah, it's really been really, I mean, so positive. We have a social on uh, Saturday night for anybody that wants to come, and we give away a whole bunch of stuff. And then our big sponsors, you know, um, Cash King, Orvis, the Fly Fishers Federation, Gun Magazine, we all give away a whole bunch of stuff, and um, it doesn't cost anything. And then Sunday morning, we actually have a woman's breakfast. We were, last year, I started a thing where we come together, and we only say what's positive in fly fishing. I don't want to hear, I went to a fly shop, and this guy asked me if I was fishing for my husband. You know, no, I, I want to hear what has changed, because so much has changed since I started the magazine five years ago, and it's all been positive. And so, you know, with the help of the New Jersey State Council of Trade Limited, they host the breakfast on Sunday. That's been an amazing um, event where women come together, and I think it's really, really positive. I'm, as you can tell, super excited about the women's showcase, the fly fishing shows. And that's included with the regular admission to the fly fishing show, which is in Edison, January 26, yep. 27, 28. Absolutely, it is. And um, you don't have to be a woman to come into the showcase, please. 
everybody is welcome. I, it, the, the word on the street is that the, flight, the Women's Showcase has a different feel, and it's a much more positive feel than the main floor. So if you're looking to get away from the testosterone boost and the epic fly fishing on the main floor, you can just walk over to the section that's the Women's Fly Fishing section, the Women's Showcase, and uh, breathe a couple uh, uh, of soft breaths on the campfire, and then go back to the epic part. <laughs> It sounds like a break that a lot of times is needed. And then you're going to be back on the East Coast Saturday, February 3rd, the Connecticut Fly Fishermen's Association's 48th Annual Banquet. You are the keynote speaker that night. That's at Manili's in South Windsor. Uh, tell us what you're talking about. So I'm going to speak. Um, I'm going to speak. I'm doing a seminar on Midwest Steelhead. And that's a really interesting program, I think, because a lot of people in the Pacific Northwest don't think that steelhead exist outside of the, of the Pacific Northwest. And um, I had a woman, and this is how it started, I had a woman write a thing on odorless on steelhead in the Midwest and can prove genetically that they're the same fish. And so we fish for them in the Midwest. Obviously, I'm from the Midwest, and we would fish for them up there. And so this is, that seminar is on catching, uh, where to find, you know, and the the history of the Midwest steelhead, specifically Great Lakes steelhead, and their tributaries. And then at night in the banquet, I'm going to be speaking on the history of women in fly fishing, which is a fascinating history lesson that you probably won't ever hear in your fly shops. So it is, um, it is, it gives women a foundation to know they belong in the rivers and on the in a fly shop and all of that. But it also educates men on the leaps and bounds that they use every day in fly fishing that were done by women. For instance, the way we tie our streamer was, is attributed to a woman. You know, I mean, and, and so many other things. I'm not going to give it all away because no, it's hard for everyone. But I'm going to be speaking on the history of women in fly fishing. Fascinating, fascinating story. I, I'm looking forward to it. You can get details at ctflyfish.org. Uh, that is all on February 3rd, so you can see Jen this weekend down at the Fly Fishing Show in Edison, or you can see her up in South Windsor, February 3rd. Jen Ripple, Dunn Magazine, thank you so much for giving us some time and joining us on Yankee Fisherman. Thank you so much for having me. We'll be back with more Yankee Fisherman presented by the Dock Shop right after this. Well, there's still a bite out on the water. Most anglers have decided to stow the gear for the winter. Just because Mother Nature isn't cooperating doesn't mean you can't see the latest models of all your favorite gear. With two convenient locations, it couldn't be easier to get your fix of summer. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenik Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, Dock Shop. Walter Stewart's Market is your destination for the best big game fixings. From our house-made fresh guacamole and dips to chili, chicken wings, pulled pork potato skins, risotto balls, and take-and-bake house-made specialty pizzas. Combined with a selection of the best craft brews, Stewart's is your one-stop big game shop. Stop into Walter Stewart's Market, conveniently located at 229 Elm Street in New Canaan, and find us at stewartsmarket.com. Want a new experience in car buying? No aggravation, no confrontation, just answers to all your questions. SCAF Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Car buying the way you want it to be. With one of the largest selections of new two- and four-door Jeep Wranglers available, we are Connecticut's Wrangler headquarters. Family owned and operated for over 50 years. Call, click, or stop in today. Save thousands at the 2018 Auto Show event and start something new sales event. Now through January 31st. At Galt, we always put you first. As your full-service home heating partner, we provide expert delivery, installation, and maintenance for all your heating needs with knowledgeable, friendly professionals that give you peace of mind 24-7. Galt Family Companies, you first since 1863. At if you've ever thought about owning a motor coach or learning about what it's like to travel the open road in superior style and comfort, then contact Dave's RV Center in Danbury, Connecticut. Offering the best quality Class A motorhomes from Newmar, travel trailers and fifth wheel lines from Surveyor, and a toy hauler line from Work and Play. Choose from Newmar's Gas Line, Base Star, and Canyon Star, or from Newmar's Diesel Line, Ventana, and Dutch Star. And with unparalleled service and maintenance, Dave's RV is committed to keeping you and your motor coach safely on the road and enjoying it to the fullest. Stop by their showroom, 2 Industrial Plaza Road, Danbury, Connecticut, or call 877-483-3866.
If had a sports injury or slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Orthopedics Walk-In Urgent Care gives you direct access to orthopedic specialists fast without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Orthopedics Walk-In Urgent Care can help. Open seven days a week now at three locations. The I Park Building at 761 Main Avenue, Norwalk, 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien, or in the Westport Medical Center at 323 Riverside Avenue, Westport. Go to CoastalOrthoCT.com. Like them on Facebook. Welcome back to Yankee Fisherman, presented by the Dock Shop. The Fly Fishing Film Tour is coming back to Connecticut, and it's growing. Mike Fatsy is joining us. Mike is with the Candlewood Valley chapter of TU. He's one of the driving forces be be behind the local showings of the Fly Fishing Film Tour. Mike, thanks for taking a few minutes to join us. We've got an expansion. Thanks for having me. Anytime. So fourth year and we're growing uh, we'll have two shows this year we're gonna have two shows this year because we've sold out the last three uh our first show is going to be february 2nd at the bowtie cinemas in trumbull and then on the 23rd we're going to have it again which is a friday night in stanford and that's also going to be at the bowtie cinemas in stanford and this is volunteers will be there taking tickets there'll be raffles food drinks what chapters are involved in this uh, the three chapters from the uh, southern part of Connecticut and uh, our chapter, Candlewood Valley, which is from the western part. So it'll be Candlewood Valley to you, Nutmeg to you, and Mianus to you. And then all of this money funds projects that those TU chapters do locally here in southwestern Connecticut. What kind of work gets supported by the money raised from these showings? Uh, the money that we raise is used in a variety of ways for our main two things, which is education and conservation. So on the education side, a lot of the money goes towards our trout in the classroom. Three chapters, we have roughly 50 tanks in schools throughout the area. And the balance of our money goes towards our conservation projects, which would be uh, stream reclamation, uh, helping people remove dams on streams so that we can have uh, full migration of uh, fish up and down streams, uh, tree plantings, um, uh, stream cleanups, uh, anything we can do to enhance our cold water fisheries. Very cool. And then plus trout in the classroom, I'm sure, get some support from it, which is really important to get the kids involved in that. Absolutely. We start them, we start them as young as middle school and I know in, in my hometown of Newtown, the kids are looking forward to it, and they do it all the way through high school. They, uh, they get their eggs just before Thanksgiving. They raise the eggs. They um, monitor the tanks. They monitor pH, acidity, everything that you have to do to make sure that they have clean, cold water. And then the last part of it is in the springtime, they take the uh, eggs that they've raised into little fingerling trout, and they release them into their local streams. And that's always a very cool thing to see. You're going to see some really wild stuff in the fly fishing film tour. The cinematography is just beautiful. The surroundings, you know, of, of course, catches, big fish. What are you looking forward to seeing? Well, what I love about the film tour is you don't know what you're going to get until you get there, but you will walk away from it going, wow, this was really cool or that was really cool. My personal preferences are anything to do with trout and trout fishing destinations. So I, I'm looking really forward to the to the uh, films about destinations and trout fishing places, bucket list places. That's what a lot of this stuff is, is people's bucket list places that they can just kind of 15 minutes and then move on to something entirely different. And the thing, John, that I like about it the most is there's a ton of really great cinematography with a lot of drone, drone footage, and you almost feel like you're standing in a river with some of these guys. There is drone footage from last year's festival of a time and hitting a streamer coming in that just, uh, people still, you still see it pop up on Facebook, just awesome stuff. Now, last year a sellout, how many people were there in Trumbull? Last year in Trumbull we had 280, and we could have had more, but we had to turn people away. So um, I, would, I would advise anyone who might be listening today that if they really want to do it, and this is something they want to be a part of, they should go online and get their tickets ahead of time, because like I said, we did have to turn people away last year. And tickets are cheaper if purchased ahead of time, if I'm not mistaken. You save five, you save $5 buying them ahead of time online. 
Um, it's $25 if you buy them ahead of time online. It's $30 at the door if there are any tickets available. And these, you can get the tickets. The, the events are posted at flyfilmtour.com, or you can get more information. You can at, go to... Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. You can, you can get your tickets at flyfishingfilmtour.com, or you can go to one of the three websites for either TU, Mianus TU, or Nutmeg TU, and you can buy your tickets there also. And if you go to han.network, go to shows, drag down a Yankee fisherman, the links to directly buy tickets to the two shows in Connecticut are also there on our page. So you'll be able to get there. There, I know I'm going to be there both nights. I really look forward to being there with you, Mike. Now, Candlewood Valley's got its banquet coming up soon, too, right? Yeah, we have our banquet on March 3rd. It's going to be at Michael's at the Grove in Bethel from 6 to 10 p.m. We have uh, great food, great group of people. Um, the highlight of our banquet, and this is our, our one major fundraiser for the year, Island auctions, uh, a live auction. One of our guys has a, become a great auctioneer over the years. And the highlight of it is that we probably have anywhere this year from 8 to 12 trips that um, are can really be quite the bargain for people who want to bid on them. It's a lot of fun. I've been there. I'm hoping to get back there this year. Mike Fatsy, thank you so much for joining us again. The Fly Fishing Film Tour in Connecticut. It is supporting local TU chapters. February 2nd in Trumbull, February 23rd in Stamford. And you can get the details on our page. Mike, thank you so much. We'll be back with more Yankee fishermen right after this. Well, there's still a bite out on the water. Most anglers have decided to stow the gear for the winter. Just because Mother Nature isn't cooperating doesn't mean you can't see the latest models of all your favorite gear. With two convenient locations, it couldn't be easier to get your fix of summer. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenik Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. Yeah, Dad. Kyle, I need you to update the financial statements. I took care of that yesterday, Dad. Mac, I need you to get those deals approved. They're all done, Mr. Miller. Jeff, I need you to order lunch for the meeting. They can't do a thing without me. Right now, Lisa 2017 Centra S for only $97 a month. I'm never going to retire. UK Gourmet is the largest specialty grocer in the area, featuring food from England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Over 80 teas to choose from and a brilliant assortment of biscuits to go with them. Over 70 cheeses from grass-fed cows, which makes a smashing difference in taste. The creamiest chocolate you'll ever taste using no artificial colors or preservatives. So say hooray for UK Gourmet. 78 Stony Hill Road in Bethel or visit ukgourmet.us. Dr. Stephen Molinaro and Peter Healy of Family Practice Dentistry and Laser Dental Care have served Richfield for over 22 years. Experienced staff offer gentle drillless techniques, preventative care, and cosmetic procedures in a relaxed environment. Grateful for the community's trust and support through the years, new patients and their families are welcome. Call today. Welcome back to Yankee Fisherman, presented by the Dock Shop. Real quick, they've gotten three DNA samples back from the trout eggs that we collected with the Deerfield River TU chapter. And they have come back for brown trout. We'll have more results and more news on that later. Uh, Connecticut DEEP Winter Festival, Saturday, February 3rd. There's information on that at ct.gov. We're going to be back next week with a new episode of Yankee Fisherman. Till then, tight lines.